Hey, and thanks for watching our video on these wing walls. This is a, a culvert that we were creating some wing walls on uh, for our local county. These wing walls are going to be about 8 feet in length. We're going to do 8 foot on this lower side and 8 feet on the upper side. You can see some damage there where the water has uh, fallen across the road and washed out quite a bit of everything underneath. There I'm showing you about... Uh, where we're going to be putting our wing walls. You can see some of the paint on the other side. These walls are going to come out, like I said, eight feet to help hold back some of the uh, roadway and some of the uh, riprap that we'll be putting around this. Um, you can see that this culvert was laid out of river stone some time ago. Um, it's actually, I'll show you in just a second how this culvert has been added to and we're going to add to it again. There's quite a bit of uh, traffic on this road, so we're going to try to widen it out just to make it a little safer. As we go across, you can see the blue flag there. That uh, represents a water line that's running underneath, and that uh, pipe you see at the top up there was a gas line. As we go down in the ditch here, you can kind of see some of the debris that the water has left behind. We had a pretty good rain that washed away most of our paintings uh, on the ground there where we're going to be extending it on this side. Again, you can see some of the damage here where the water and debris has um, uh, removed a lot of silt and stuff from the sides. You can kind of tell where um, the wing wall, well, actually that wing wall right there that we're just showing you was one that was added at a later time. Again, I'm just showing you some uh, of the wash. This culvert actually creates a good bit of underwash here when the... Um, when we have a pretty good storm. It doesn't get over the road right here, but it gets pretty high. That's the reason for the uh, the damage that you're seeing there. Here you can kind of see where they added to this culvert once before, where it the culvert itself actually makes a turn uh, underneath the road. We're going to be bringing ours out straight with each side so that you can kind of see what's uh, you know straight through all right well let's uh let's take a look at how we construct these uh, wing walls here you can see we've got our footings formed up that's actually about 14 inches deep you can't really tell there's a lot of mud in there we shoveled out a ton of it there's toby uh there's ronnie our concrete our truck driver we've got our vertical pieces of steel in um, we're going to have to extend those up a little higher. This wall actually came up about six feet. Um, we just got some in there. Here you can see Toby. We've already got our footings poured out. Toby is using this um, hammer drill. It's actually a Thunderbolt by Milwaukee. It is, has been a super drill. He's had it for I don't know how many years. Uh, longer than I've known him and he has drilled many many holes with it and so and it's still working as good today as it did the day he bought it so um that's a really good drill again you can see our rebar that we have uh down into our concrete so when we're getting ready to uh put our horizontal pieces in that's why toby's boring these he's core drilling these holes in we'll actually have core drilled all across the top of this too in a later uh, clip I'll show you we're putting this rebar in anywhere from four to six inches into the wall um, just to help secure our wall to it here you can see we've already got our um, horizontals and verticals started we run off and left our cap so you can see where we actually put some caution tape around the top of those things we definitely don't recommend that uh, we had to come back and put some caps on at a later time, but we did run off and leave them. Um, we're going to, like I said, extend this up uh, another foot or so. You can kind of see how we, we're going to bring these wing walls in. Uh, I'm showing you here where we how we core drill those things in, but that's pretty much the angle that our wall is going to be setting at. Um, again, it's going to come out about eight feet you can see the spacing on some of these rods is not exact 
we try to put those things as close to eight inches or whatever the uh, drawing calls for but in some scenarios you hit we hit rock there and we drilled down through most of it but um, in some applications just wasn't possible here again I'm showing you where the um, uh, about the height we're gonna uh, bring our wing wall up to the bottom of that culvert there so you can see the difference it's pretty good um, you know 14 to 16 inches thick on our footing there our steel uh, is in pretty good shape of course we tie every we got quite a bit of overlap there I just we really want to be sure that you know when we do um, build these walls that they're secure these walls are going to be um, a foot. I believe we did these a foot. Uh, that I'm pointing out that we don't have our our caps on. I'm on. There's that gas line again that I was telling you about. A lot of this stuff we pulled back with our mini X to try to you know get down in there where we could do some work. I'm going to walk over to the other side and give you a chance to see. Uh, what the walls on the other side they're not at s such a sharp angle to the existing walls these come out a little more straight uh, you can see Toby taping up our our caps there and you can see where we ran out of steel we didn't have uh, enough we really didn't plan on putting our horizontals in today we poured this footing this morning and we went ahead and, and ran what steel we had you can see how our wall is going to tie into the river stone there. That's going to create us a, a, a problem. Whenever we get ready to put our wall forms up, we have to make sure that we fill in the gaps at the end to try to keep from wasting all of our concrete. Again, that wall on the other side is it's not straight, but it's pretty close. You can see our extra concrete there we had. We just went ahead and poured it out behind that wall. And um, the need to extend that still out um, again we just we didn't bring enough steel really weren't prepared uh, to do what all we were doing so we'll have to come back in just a few minutes and uh, I'll, I'll be able to show you a clip of where we did you can see where we um, I'm pointing there at the level we're gonna bring it all the way up to the top of that so about another foot right here on this side also all these big stones in the middle we had to remove them out um, just so that we can put our pan over makes it easier for us to work around you know having a clean space is always a, a pretty good idea keeps people from getting hurt I think we pull we poured eight uh, I think 20 something yards total in this in these pours counting the footings the walls and the deck here you can see we started forming up um, our steel mats right here we've got them uh, about like they were in the other video you can see I'm pointing how it's off center what we're gonna do is pull that over to keep that in the center of our wall we want to make sure that we have our uh, steel as close as we can to the center of the our wall when we get done this is a little different system than we use um, well then our gates and sun in some previous videos that you have seen where the gates and sun is a rod type uh, wall system this is a uh, well we call it a clip style system it's what we do like about this system is that it's rigid when you put it in unlike the gates and suns um, which is uh, rigid on one side but on the other side it, it has to expand out as the uh, weight of the concrete gets on it this is rigid on both sides and it makes it um, you know you know you're secure now we really like the gates and sun system it's super uh, fast and easy to work with we can get a lot of stuff done here you can kind of see again our steel we're gonna have to pull it over just a little bit we got our wall setting where we want it this wall has already been straightened we just have to adjust our steel we'll do that with some chairs and uh, tie it off on the inside so that when we pour we make sure that we've got it where we need it you can kind of tell how we braced it across on that end right there because that's the the part where you can't put 
your snap ties through because of the uh, wall that is behind it um, or the existing wall so we really brace that good so that when we vibrate our wall we don't have a anything blow out there you can see where we we took some red heads and uh, anchored some plywood to the existing wall there these are some pictures here of Toby cutting off the uh, the top of the rebar that we had um, when we added to our vertical pieces this is uh, showing part of the decking and kind of how we uh, built our our bridge deck we used um, 8 inch channel on the outside welded those together we core drilled all the steel into the existing wall you can see the spacing of our rebar is anywhere between 8 inches to a foot that's to make sure that we've got a good solid deck okay so we came back to look uh, they've hauled in all their surge rock the county has we just want to give you a, a view of kind of what it looked like after the fact you can see our walls down there uh, you can see our top deck up here where we've got everything finished up they've got their rock in um, holding everything back looks really good they're getting ready to uh, finish that up let's walk over here to the other side you can see where they've filled in around the uh, um, gas line there we, you can see here how they we've got everything sitting up got our deck shimmed up they'll fill in all this right here on the top side there and kind of level all that stuff up gives them a good base but yeah looks good everything's free and clear underneath I've got this rock put all the way back in there after a couple of good rains it looks good all right As you can see how they filled up the other culvert over here so good deal Looks good.